What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amber McIntyre. If you're new here, welcome. All right, today we're gonna talk about editing photos in Lightroom versus Darktable. This is one of the things when I was looking at making the switch from Lightroom to open source software, I wanted to make sure that the edits I was gonna make for my clients and for my own personal photos were gonna look the same in the open source software like Darktable, Raw Therapy, as they would have if I was editing them in Lightroom. I think I found a viable alternative in Darkroom, and I wanna show you guys and prove to you that you can do the same type of edits in both softwares. So if you're looking for free open source software to replace your Lightroom, I feel like Darktable is the place that you wanna to move to. So come on in, let's see for yourself. Today, we are gonna be editing the same photo in Lightroom as we edit in Darktable. I'm gonna let you guys be the judge of how these edits look at the end so you can decide for yourself if Darktable is a viable solution for replacing Lightroom. For me, totally worth it. Now, the edits may turn out a little bit differently because, disclaimer, these systems work a little differently. So when I do the edit in Darktable, I'm gonna to try to replicate what Lightroom does to your photos just out of the box when you upload them with just a couple clicks. So we're gonna see how close I get, but I think these are still gonna be a pretty viable alternative. You're gonna see photos at the end that are very similar, and some of you may even prefer the way they look in one software over another. I'm gonna let you be the judge of that. So let's get started. See you in there. So over here on the left, I have Darktable pulled up and I have my photo loaded. It's a, just a cute picture of two kids on Halloween. This is a raw photo, so there has not been anything done to this photo straight out of camera. It's just loaded into Darktable and it's ready to go. Over here on the right, I have the same exact raw photo pulled up in Lightroom. And the very first thing that I notice when I pull these photos up side by side is the difference in the way they look. Both photos are raw photos straight out of the camera, supposedly, and I have not done anything to them in this software. You can I'll scroll down here. My history in Lightroom just says that I have imported this photo, and my history stack over here in Darktable. Um, these are all the things, these six things, are what's needed to actually pull up a physical image in your software. So none of this is stuff that I've done and none of it is stuff that I can change. Even if I hit compressed history stack, it doesn't go away. So this is straight out of the camera, pulled straight into this software. This is straight out of the camera, pulled into this software. Now, just at first glance off the top of my head, I actually prefer the look and feel of Lightroom. And this is something that I was feeling really frustrated with when I first started with Darktable. I could not figure out to save my life why my photos did not look as good when I pulled them into Darktable just straight out of the camera as they did when I pulled them into Lightroom. Um, to me, just like looking at the difference between these, this looks muddy and flat and this looks sharper and brighter. And I found out actually that there is a reason this photo looks sharper and brighter. And that's because even though I have not done anything to this image, Lightroom has done a little bit of post-processing on their end before they show me this final result. Now it's kind of smart on their part because it actually makes the photo look like I've taken a better photo. Um, than what I actually really have because this is actually what the photo looks like straight out of my camera. This is actually a raw, untouched version of the image. So Lightroom, I'm going to scroll down and show you guys this. Lightroom actually adds a sharpening for my, um, this is just default Lightroom. I have not done anything to change it, but for mine, it's adding a sharpening value of 40. It's sharpening the details as well, and a little bit of color noise reduction, and I think some other stuff on the back end as well. Obviously, it looks like they've lightened it up a little bit compared to this, um, or maybe that's just how this software appears. But in any case, I prefer the look of the Lightroom photos just straight out of the camera, 
but I'm going to show you guys that you can get that exact same look in Darktable with just a couple of extra clicks. And for the difference in what you pay for Lightroom a month, I would say that Darktable is totally worth it. So let's get started. I'm going to edit both photos here side by side and show you what the final image looks like. So first thing that I want to point out, if you guys are new to Darktable or have not used it before, there are several things that are going to look very similar to Lightroom. Uh, one is that you have the histogram here in the upper right hand corner, you have a preview of your image in the upper left hand corner, all of that looks the same between Darktable and Lightroom. Histogram, preview, preview, histogram. Then you're also going to have in Darktable a bunch of different modules down below where you can actually do your edits. This is laid out a little bit differently than in Lightroom. In Lightroom, if this is what you're used to, you're going to see all of these different sections that you can expand and each one has options inside of it. So you have your basic one, which is where you start, that has options for exposure, highlights, shadows, blacks, all that kind of stuff. And then as you go on down, you have tone curve, where you can make changes on a curve. You have your color window, where you can change hue, saturation, luminance, all of that. And then you have split toning detail. I'm not going to go through all of these because this is not an in-depth look at Lightroom. I want to actually show you the difference in these two edits. But just so that you know, you can make changes to your photo in any order in Lightroom. Now, it obviously changes the processing time for your images. So if you have an older or a slower computer, then you definitely don't want to do changes like... Um, stuff that's going to be GPU or CPU heavy at first. Um, so you don't really want to do a bunch of stuff like detail corrections and split toning first and then come up here and do your basic. Like you, you really want to follow these modules in order because that helps the computer process your image in a, in a faster way. In Darktable though, it definitely does matter how you process your images and in what order. So they have laid out these modules in order of how you need to start. So you need to start at the top, work your way down to the bottom, instead of just like, oh, I need to do some color mapping, start here and then like jump over to here and do a base curve and then jump up and do color and then jump down and do white balance. Work through these in order because in Darktable, it definitely affects how your photo gets edited and what the final look and feel of your photo is gonna be if you don't do these in order. Okay, so that's my public service announcement. Let's get started. So I'm gonna start over here in dark table. First thing that I'm gonna do over here is a little bit of base curve. Now I am going to apply, I'm using a Canon camera, so I'm gonna apply a Canon base curve just right out of the gate. And there's two options. There's a Canon EOS like and a Canon EOS like alternate. I like to try both. This one actually looks a little bit more similar to how it looks over here in Lightroom. So just for the sake of keeping these images as equal as possible, I'm gonna leave it on the Canon EOS like alternate for my base curve. Okay, I'm not gonna to touch the rest of these, we're just gonna move on. Then I'm gonna go over here to some basic adjustments and still think exposure may be a little brighter in the Lightroom image, so I'm just gonna Brighten that up just a tad. Then I'm going to come down here to the saturation and I'm going to increase that just a little. Again, I'm going for something similar between these two so that you can see that editing the same image in a very similar way is definitely possible. And I'm going to add a little bit of vibrance here. I'm actually adding quite a bit because I'm looking at the difference in We've had to come up this far to get close to what Lightroom is applying over here. And still, I'm looking at the difference in the door. Look at the color of this door versus the flatter color of this door. Let's go over and add a little bit of contrast. All right, and I'm going to come down to my white balance. This image is really not bad. It needs a little bit of white balance correction. Ooh. Not a whole lot. I was just trying to see if I could push to get that door the same color as this. I'm making this one just a little bit bigger so I can zoom in a little bit and see. Okay, so the other kind of sneaky thing that Lightroom does just out of the gate is that they add all of this sharpening to your image. Now remember, when we started, I had not done anything to this image. 
Actually, I still haven't. My history just shows that I've just imported it. I haven't done anything else to it. And you can see over here that I've already got some color noise reduction going on and I have some sharpening going on. So I'm gonna come over here because this image still does not look as clear as this image to me. So I'm gonna come over here and do a little bit of sharpening. There's sharpen. All right, so we are going to, all right, instead of a 40, I think I'm gonna leave this at like almost a four. All right, um, what I just did there was I right clicked on the number and then it gives you this where you can adjust it this way or you can just type the number that you want. So I just right clicked and then typed the number four and hit enter and then I've got that sharpened at a four. I'm just zooming in to see what her hands look like here. I think we also do need to do a little bit of noise reduction on this image. So here's her hand in Lightroom, and here is her hand in Darktable. So yeah, I can definitely see the difference. They've got um, some color noise reduction going on over here. There's no weird colors in her pants, and there are weird speckle noise reduction colors over here in her pants on this side. This isn't bad it's not too different i can tell that this image in lightroom is still quite a bit sharper so let's go back over here and I'm trying to get these to match here you can definitely see i've got a little bit of chromatic aberration right here under her chin in dark table I don't have that in Lightroom, probably because it's already doing a noise reduction for, for the image overall. So I'm going to come over here and go to Denoise Profiled, and it's already trying to match for the exact ISO that I was using. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on, and just see what this looks like. Ah, oh, look at that. It's much better. I'm actually going to bump it down just a little. All right, this white balance is not really doing it for me, so I'm going to show you guys a different way. When you're doing your white balance in Darktable, I like to come down here. I like to come down here to the bottom and click User Modified. And then you can change this to a different kind of white balance if you want. You can choose um, default it from camera, camera neutral spot balance, user modified. I'm not just going to keep reading these to you, but these are the different options you can do. I like to pick camera. I feel like that gets me fairly close. Or you can do spot, and then this one you can draw a little square, and it's going to adjust your white balance off of whatever shades or colors are in your square. So I could go for the brightest whites and pull from that. I'm going to do this and adjust for skin. That's actually not bad. I don't mind that. Alright, we're going to leave it based off of her face. <laughs> Close enough. I'm actually going to decrease the contrast back down. Okay, and I'm going to go now to color zones. There we go. And the thing that I like to do for color zones is you can, there's a lot of options here, but you can actually click on color from the image. So let's say I want to work on their skin tone. So we'll give it like right there. It's going to give you a little bar over here that shows you where that color is located on this graph. So if I know I want to increase the saturation of my skin tones, I can come right here to the middle of this little circle where put it right in the middle of that bar and bump it up. So see how that increases like my oranges and all that kind of stuff. All those lovely colors. Now, when you're working with color zones, less is more. So let's see, you can find the skin tone color. I can come over here and put my little spot on the graph and I can bump up the colors that are in that section. Now, let's say it's bumping my greens and I don't want that. I can come over here, right here to the greens and put another little little dip here and I can decrease the saturation of the color green, even though I have also increased the orange that's right beside it. Okay, you can make this curve wider if you need to. Let's work on this. Let's work on some skin tones here. I'm gonna change and instead of using color zones 
I'm going to use color correction. You definitely have a lot more control over the colors that appear in your image in Darktable than you do in Lightroom. And I'm gonna show you why. So this is one section, just one section, where I can change the colors in my image based on the lightest parts of the image and the darkest parts of the image. So this little white dot is all that you start with. And you're going to kind of drag this down into a line and it then gives you two points. You have a white point and a black point. The white point is going to be adjusting everything in your highlights. So the brightest parts of your image are going to turn whatever color you mouse over with the white dot. So if I bring the white dot down here to the purple, the lightest parts of my image turn purple. Same thing if I bring it over here to the blue. So you less is more with these you don't really want to go far but when I'm looking at this image it has kind of like a cool appearance to me it's kind of a little blue I want to warm it up a little bit and add a little bit of yellow orangey skin tone color so the way that I do that is you look down here find the blue so this image looked blue to me to start with so you find the blue and then go to whatever color is the opposite. So go to opposite corners of whatever you need. So if this image had a lot of green and I had taken it by the mountains and I wanted to tone the green down, I maybe would want to push it more towards the purple. Because it looks blue, I want to push it up here towards the yellow-orange section. And I'm going to kind of play with this because I don't want an image that looks completely yellow but I also don't want their skin to look pale. So I typically will drag one of those dots all the way to the end so that I can see like, okay, these are my shadows that are gonna be affected by this color change. And once you find like a section that looks good, like I would say somewhere right in here is probably good for this image for me, then you wanna back it way off so that it is nowhere near like you, you want to kind of go back towards the middle and then just slightly go in that direction. Now every now and then I like to take a break from this because my eyes start to get a little bit tricked out after looking at this image for so long. If I go off of it and then come back to it, typically I'll see something that needs to be changed just right off the bat. So I'm going to switch back over to Lightroom now and we will come back to this dark table image in just a second. Here's our image in Adobe Lightroom. Now, there's not much, honestly, that I would change about this photo. I'm going to back the highlights down just a little bit. I don't want them to be quite so intense. And because this is a superhero kind of vibe with a lot of angles and shadows, I'm going to give it a little bit of clarity. Sorry, I clicked texture. I meant to click clarity here. I'm going to give it a little bit of clarity, not much because these are still kids and I want photos of kids to be soft and not as angular. Now, if I really wanted to get picky and I was like editing this for a client or something, I would edit out that distracting background and I would want to get rid of this little leaf situation right here. Because it's just kind of annoying me. All right, that's probably literally all I would do to this, to this particular image. All right, now that I've looked away from this one for a few minutes, I feel like it has a purplish vibe to it that I'm not really digging. So I'm gonna try to get this a little bit more back to center. Open the exposure just a little. Okay, there's Lightroom. There's Dark Table. Lightroom. Dark table. All right, guys, one last time. Here's a side by side of both of these photos. This one on the right is the one we edited in Lightroom. This one on the left is the edit from Dark Table. See what you guys think and let me know down in the comments which one do you guys prefer? Which one looks better to you? Obviously, there's some slight differences, but um, the goal was just to get the picture on the left in Darktable to look as close to the one in Lightroom, editing them in a similar fashion. Um, and I think we did pretty good.
If you guys like this video, please hit that like button and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything coming up. I'm going to be publishing more videos like this one with full walkthroughs of how I edit my photos in Darktable and all kinds of stuff like that. All right, until next time, you guys. See ya.